If you were to take a look back at the Famicom, which was the Japanese version of the Nintendo Entertainment System, you would see a microphone built into the controller. In fact, Famicom games could register sounds as inputs. The popular Legend of Zelda in Japan even had an enemy that could only be defeated by using that microphone. Fast forward 15 years and the Nintendo 64 is a leading home console platform. While it did not have a microphone built into the controller, it did have a voice recognition unit and perhaps one of the most infamous games to utilize it. Hey you Pikachu. While the player could supposedly talk and interact with Pikachu, usually you just got ignored while the Pokemon in the game did whatever they wanted no matter what you said. That's a mushroom. Don't eat that. Pikachu. Continuing the tradition, the GameCube also had a microphone that connected to the console via the memory card port. It came in a bundle with the four games that used it. Mario Party 6 and 7, Karaoke Revolution, and Odama, the most interesting release. A feudal Japanese war game with pinball elements where the player commanded their troops with their voice. At this point, voice control began to evolve, and rather than being a novelty gimmick for operating games, started to be used more for communication. The popularity of online gaming came with a need to communicate with those not sitting next to you. Headphones were a popular choice on Xbox and PlayStation platforms, while the Wii came out with the Wii Speak accessory, a USB microphone that was positioned near the TV and captured an entire room's audio. Succeeding the Wii was the Wii U, which used both headphones and a microphone integrated into the controller, much like the Famicom. Games such as Call of Duty and Mario Kart 8 would use the headphones, while programs like the Wii U's video chat would use the integrated microphone. And so we have come full circle, with the future looking bright.